Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lex Tech, and today we're going to be taking a look at this Dell motherboard which I picked up recently for uh, $15 alongside an i5-2400 which I paid $20 for. Now, these motherboards are very annoying and have a ton of errors when they boot up. Um, and today we're going to go ahead and fix those errors. Those include the fan error, uh, hard drive error, um, the uh, front pin error, the air sensor error, and the power button error as well. So without further ado, roll the intro and we'll get straight away into it. So to fix these issues, it is quite easy. Um, this will work both with a Dell 970 and a Dell 990. Basically what we're gonna be doing is shorting out different um, pins and then adding a uh, pin as well to where you know the pins should be. Um, so without further ado, let's head outside and I'll show you exactly what you must do to fix all of those errors. Okay, so before we go anywhere, I just want to tell you what you will need to clear all the errors. Uh, first of all, you will need an adapter. I'll get into this adapter soon. We will need some flux and a soldering iron and um, just a single 2.4 kilo ohm resistor. I'll talk about this later as well. So we'll get away, we'll start away straight away with the easiest one, the easiest error to fix. And that will be, um, I believe it is the hard drive error on the 990 or the system fan on the um, 790. What you need to do is you need to buy a Dell. It's this weird proprietary plug right here. It's super weird. It's five pins, but only uses four pins to your standard um, four pin PWM uh, fan. And what you do is you plug the Dell end into it, and then you plug in a system fan into this, and bada bing bada boom, you fixed your error. And if you're saying, oh, I don't want to put a fan in my system, buddy, buddy, um, I'm pretty positive you should be putting a fan at least here or there at least to exhaust some of the air, you know? Um, pretty positive, Dell puts that in there for a reason, uh, pretty sure. So that's the easiest thing to do. This cost me five bucks, so I'm Australian, so probably like $3 USD. Um, came in under a week and it does the job perfectly. Pop, put it in. I originally, I originally actually bought this to adapt this into a CPU fan for a new cooler. Okay, so the next easiest step, what well, we'll do the two next easiest steps are the front IO error, um, basically, uh, if it's not plugged in, it'll give you an error, therefore you have to press F1. And then there's another error up here with the front, uh, with the power button. If that's not plugged in, it'll throw an error. So to fix those two, uh, that is quite simple. Uh, you basically just have to short two pins out. Now, the way I like to do it is permanent. Um, and that will be meaning you put a dab of solder between those two pins right there. So four across and the two like that. So if you look at the board like so, it will be those uh, pins there with the black outline and then with the power button it will be essentially the two pins uh, next to the single pin and you just short those two pins there and then uh, it'll work so I'll do that quickly and I'll show you what I mean uh, exactly okay so this is the front IO as you can see I short out those two pins right there using a bit of solder and then I short out these two pins up top here with solder and what that will do it will remove the power button issue and it will remove the front IO issue um, I had a lot of issues with this one, trying to get the solder to bond to both. So what I ended up doing was just grabbing a piece of um, wire, wait, focus, um, salt, basically extracting a lot of the insulation off, remaining only with, you know, the wire itself. I then coated the wire in solder, and then I just put the wire on top like so. Oh, for focus. And then I just cut off the remaining bit of the wire and, and left it as is, like so. And basically what that does, is it doesn't short um, any other pins except for those two pins. And as we go, now we have no uh, front IO error or power button error. So now next up is the um, heat uh, temperature sensor error. So for the temperature sensor error, what you will need is a 2.4K ohm resistor. Um, these are 0.5 watt resistors. And what this will do, it will essentially just make the motherboard think that it is um, at 15 degrees. Um, and that should just work absolutely fine. Now, um, the science behind it is simple. Um, a real thermometer is just a resistor. The hotter it gets, the more resistance it builds, I believe. Um, and these basically just simulate a constant resistance. So we'll just go ahead, open the packet up, and I'll, uh, I'll solder it onto the back of the motherboard uh, onto this connector, and I'll show you how, how I've done it. So we'll skip that part, and I'll show you what I've done. 
Okay, so here it is. I've dabbed it in hot glue just to make sure that it stays on. These are quite fragile connections, so I would recommend a bit of hot glue over it. But as you can see, inside both of them are connected to either side. I don't think, um, it doesn't matter which side you put them on. Uh, they both have the exact same resistance. At the end of the day, you run current through one or the other, it will do the exact same job. Um, so you're just gonna connect it randomly which side you want to do. And I've just left mine like so. You could probably shorten it as well. Um, I just couldn't be stuffed. And I just left it as is um, on there. So that should fix your uh, temp temperature issue. And without further ado, that is how you fix all your errors. So now we'll go inside and we'll double check that all these modifications actually work and that the motherboard still powers on. All right, so I'm running last week's mod, which is the Acer PC uh, power supplier with the Pico PSU. Uh, this is basically the PC that's gonna be built. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, and so basically we've got a, just, you know, a single, uh, just a 90 millimeter fan I got out of a, a HP PC that connects to the adapter. So we've got that issue out of the way. We still have the shorted out uh, power button back there, power button pins down there. And we also have the shorted out pins down there. And we also have the um, pot uh, the pot uh, 2.4 K ohm resistor installed into the back of the, um, the thermometer of the, of the motherboard pretty much. Uh, one thing I also will want to point out is that if you wish to get a power button working with just, you know, random normal deep cool case for example that just uses the single you know two pin power switch what you want to do i know it's a bit hard let me just uh try and hopefully get the uh lights on in here two seconds okay lights on as you can see down here we have uh shaking this thing getting better we have uh what is it five pins so we've got two two and one you want to grab your power switch doesn't matter which way because at the end of the day it's just shorting it out um and you want to just plug it in to the first two pins on the left like so and that is in like so and that's it that's genuinely what it takes I'll try and get my phone in there a bit better there we go better there we go that's how it's supposed to be I believe it gives you a better idea yeah I'm sorry about this it's it's a bit cramped in here it's just a bit aids all over the place as you can see we've got the two pins and the three pins and the two pins which are powered by the power off switch. So when you're gonna to go to power on your Dell 790 or your 990, uh, mine's, when you turn the power on, it will automatically turn on. And if it's detected a power switch, it will autom automatically turn back off, hit the power switch and the rig will boot up. Mind you, I do not have a hard drive installed, so it will, give, it will throw that error. Um, I've also got a keyboard installed, a wireless keyboard. So 990 right there. And then you can see, alert, hard drive not found. That is it. That is all that we have. That's the only error. There we go, fix it. <laughs> Out of a couple mods, that's all it takes to fix the issues with it. Now, as for adapters, um, the only adapter I can quote unquote think about is either that one or the power switch. Um, unfortunately, with this motherboard, you probably won't have front I.O. unless you try and do the couple mods that are out there, which are really just janky, janky. Um, but this one, this is pretty clean. I, if you look at it like this, you will not know that those mods have been done and it just makes it look very, very clean. So yeah, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time. See you guys.